Hey everyone, so this is a little lesson on the intermediate value property and continuous functions. And if you've never watched my videos before, I highly recommend you pause and try the examples when prompted. Also, there are always free guided notes available at dividingconquermath.com. And hey, while you're here, maybe you I have been finding my videos helpful. If you're looking to give me some help with my channel, it would be great if you could like my videos or even better if you could subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if there's ever any feedback, things that you want to continue to see, things you wish you could see more of, and also tell your friends about my channel. I'm trying to build a nice free resource for everyone of quality math help. So let's talk about the intermediate value property. So this is when a function has all of the values in between two points A and B. So what does that mean? So here's a graph. So I've got these two points marked here, A and B. And so what the intermediate value property says is that basically you, you have kind of this, so just all the values are filled in. So maybe put another way, what can't happen is you can't have something like this happen. This would be a function that does not have the intermediate value property. So it's gotta be all filled in and it doesn't have to look like this, it can look like whatever, but you get the idea. Okay, so from the intermediate value th uh, property, we actually get two consequences when we have that and we're also thinking about continuity. So the first consequence is what we call connectedness and it's consequence, but not like a bad consequence. It's just, it happens to be two things that we get out of this. So what, what connectedness means, it's actually like something pretty obvious, I think. It's saying that a graph will be a curve without any breaks. So one of the consequences then is that you have to have this, you can't have this. So that's the idea of connectedness. So like I said, um, like it seems weird that we point that out, but there are certain exercises where this will come into play. So I'll show you that in a moment. The other consequence is what we call root finding. So a root is a solution to, if you have a function and you set it equal to zero, that's what's known as a root. So it's anything that makes the function equal zero. Okay, so if a function goes from negative to positive or vice versa, then we know it has a root. So here's what I mean by that. So we've got the intermediate value property. So here are my two points, I've got A and B. And so notice, so A is positive and B is negative. So the, the Y values, right? The, the Y values are positive and negative. So what this is trying to say then is if I have the, in, the intermediate value property here, then as I'm going through, basically what's gotta have happen is I've gotta have a root. So you see right there, I have that root. So that's guaranteed to happen if your function goes from positive to negative or vice versa, um, then, then you've gotta have a root. And you don't have to have just one root by the way. So I just drew one random function, but here's another one. So this one is going up and down, up and down, up and down. So it can go up and down as many times as it wants. Functions can do whatever they want. So this one has lots of roots. So I circled all of them. So anything can happen, but you're guaranteed to have at least one root. So that's the other consequence. So there's two exercises that typically come up that are kind of related to these properties. Okay, so related to these ideas is this question. So what value of A makes this a continuous function? So this is a piecewise function. I've got x squared plus one is great when, when x is greater than two. I went ahead and actually graphed this part of the function. I graphed that right here. And notice the, the other part of this piecewise function. It says ax when x is less than or equal to two. So this, this is like not a complete thing I can graph right now, right? So I wanna figure out what value of a would make these two pieces connected. So if, this part right here is, is listed here. Where I have this open dot, that's where I want an overlap to happen. So I want these two functions to be equal to one another at that point. So let's think about what that means. I want these two functions to be equal to one another. And when I say I want them to be equal to one another at that point, what is that point? At the point x equals two, this is where I want my overlap to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug two in like this, and then notice what happens. At first, looking at this, this was kind of weird. And now that I've plugged two in, as I sort this out, I get five equals two A. Now I can just solve for A, right? And wasn't this the whole point of the, the exercise was to find the A? So now let's, let's see, I, I wanna try graphing this out. So now instead of having this be AX, this is gonna be five over two X. 
So this is just a line, right? This is really in slope intercept form. So I start here, my, my slope intercept, uh, my intercept is zero. And then I can go up one, two, three, four, five, and over two, and check that out. Perfect overlap. And so there's the rest of the graph. So it's a little bit of a funky looking graph, but that's that's the idea, and that's what we're, we're trying to make happen. And here's the other type of um, question that kind of comes up with the inter intermediate value property. So show that this equation has three solutions in this closed interval. So basically what we want to do is we want to think about, so we want to actually kind of go in, in pieces here. So if I go, let me use white here. So if I go from negative four to three, so here's what I want to do. I just want to notice the value of this function from say negative four to three. So let me call this, let me call this f of x. And actually let's, let's not do this like this. I'm, I'm gonna set this up in a table. So this will be my f of x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have x and I'm gonna plug this into this table. And this is a little bit of an experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna grab a few random values and let's see, I'll continue on over here. So I'm gonna just fill this in. So let's do this for one, two, three, and four. Okay, so let's start there. Let me fill this in. So I'm just gonna plug this right into the function. Okay, so this is kind of a clunky way to approach this, but it, it kind of helps illustrate my point. So if you're given a function on some, some interval and you're just trying to figure out, does it have a root? So you can kind of play around with the function like this. And what you're looking for is where the signs change. So what I mean is I go from negative six to 17. So somewhere in here, there is a root. So this would be one root. Okay, so then I don't have any sign changes until I get from here to here. So let's see, this is the second root, two roots. And then I stay negative until I get here. So here's my, my three roots. So here's how I can tell them that I have three solutions or three roots is because I see that there are three sign changes within this interval. Now, it's totally possible, by the way, like th this kind of worked out pretty conveniently for us. It's not always the case that it's going to happen on whole numbers. You could actually have something far less convenient, like maybe you have your sign change somewhere between, so somewhere like between negative 4 and negative 4.5, and then maybe from negative 4.5 to negative 5, like you could have two sign changes in like one of these um, intervals. But a lot of times when you're doing these problems, um, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times the textbook wants to make it so that you can you can easily find them just to kind of make the point. So we can see here that there are definitely three solutions. Okay, so that is it for this video. So it's kind of just a, a quick overview. If you're looking for more examples, I do have plenty of example videos. Any questions or comments, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.